We are in Philadelphia, city of brotherly love, where today college football's great sibling rivalry will be played. Army, Navy, for the 113th time. And the pageantry you hear so much about begins three hours before kickoff as the Naval Brigade of Midshipmen, followed by the Army Corps of Cadets, will march onto this field. CBS Sports Network is proud to bring you Inside College Football, Army, Navy, March On, presented by USAA. This game has been played for over 100 years, a rivalry like no other. They play with pride and passion, knowing that soon, together, they will defend the nation they love. They honor their brothers who have gone before them and their brothers yet to come. There is incredible respect, but beat Army and sink Navy are ingrained from day one. Reputation, bragging rights, and the Commander-in-Chief's trophy are on the line. From the city of brotherly love, it's Army, Navy, the purest rivalry in sports. doesn't get you fired up. You don't have a pulse. It's Army and Navy. The men and women of the brigade, as well as the Corps of Cadets, got here early in the morning for this 113th meeting between Army and Navy. It's Army-Navy March On, presented by USAA. Navy has won 10 straight in the series. For the first time since 05, this matchup is for the commander in Chief's Trophy. Brent Stover, Ron Zook, Brian Jones, We'll hear from Adam and Randy Cross as well coming up momentarily here on this show. There's Ohio State, Michigan. There's Oklahoma, Texas. There's Auburn, Alabama. BJ, you've been fired up about those matchups all year, but you've got an extra little hop in your step today. Yeah, a little bit more in my giddy up for this one, folks. There's nothing like Army versus Navy. After this game, they'll go their separate ways, but they'll still be on the same team today. It's all about separate teams, and Army's trying to break the snide 10 straight. I got Navy! Yeah. I got Army! That's what I'm talking about, baby. They're fired up and I'm fired up. <laughs> How about it, Coach? This is your first foray. It it, it's my first one, and I'm going to tell you, I, you know, I've been in a lot of big games before, but the excitement and the energy that's around here is unbelievable. And, you know, you think about it, this is as big a rivalry as it is, but the respect that these two teams have for each other is unbelievable. I'm excited. This is a fun day. Army has not taken home the Commander-in-Chief's trophy in 16 years. They're 2-9. and nine. They play 7-4 and four Navy, already headed to a bowl game for the midshipmen. With more, let's head inside of Lincoln Financial Field for Adam Zucker and Randy Cross. Guys. All right, Brent, thank you very much here with Randy. And uh, this is just a, a great spectacle that we're about to behold the second time that we've ever brought it, the march on, to everyone watching at home. And uh, it is something to behold. Well, and, and BJ's going to do something that Aaron Taylor usually does and he'll do later on today. He's got both teams. <laughs> He's playing to the crowd, isn't playing he? Playing both sides. But when you, you're around these groups, I, I've been around the Navy team. I, I've been around the Army team. I, I've been around those campuses. During the year, it's very, very special just to be able to see their routine, see what these young men and women go through every day. But when they're around these academy games, to see that scene up at Army when they beat Air Force this year, the stands empty onto the field, gives you just a little window about what a piece of this game is like. About 15 minutes away from the Navy march on and uh, the crowd slowly trickling in here. Of course, high security, the vice president will be here later today. Uh, the commander in chief, Barack Obama was here last year when the game was in Washington, D.C., and his trophy is on the line today. The Commander-in-Chief scoreboard presented by Lucas Oil, and as Brent said, for the first time since 2005, it is winner-take-all. Commander-in-Chief trophy going to the school that wins today. Air Force with the most all-time, but Army and Navy both scored wins over the Falcons. Army trying to get its first trophy for the first time since 1996. Navy trying to fill a hole in that trophy case and bring it back after having one seven straight and when we come back here to inside college football army navy march on presented by usaa a look at the quarterbacks involved in today's game
week on Welcome back to Philadelphia. And you take a look at the all-time series, 113th meeting. Navy leads, and Navy has won 10 in a row. And again, first time since 05. This particular matchup at the end of the season, early December, is for the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. This is Army-Navy March Hunt, presented by USAA, just outside of Lincoln Financial Field. And when you talk Army, you've got to talk about the man that has been at quarterback since the day he arrived in uh, at West Point, and that would be Trent Steelman. He's littered all over the Army record books down through his career. Yeah, if there's one player that lives up to his surname, it's Trent Steelman. He has been a man of steel. He's dealt with injuries throughout his tenure there at West Point, but he's all-time leading rush in terms of touchdowns more than the great Glenn Davis. This young man has over 1,100 yards rushing. He's got power. He's got speed. He's electrifying when he's got the ball in his hand. And he is the main reason the Army is leading the nation in rushing. He's a phenomenal athlete and leader of this football team. Well, and you talk about Trent Stillman, there's no question. He's second all time in career yardage uh, with, with, with Army. And then you got to look at Keenan Reynolds on, on the Navy side. This guy here is a true freshman. He's five and one as a true freshman, really six and one if you count the game that he came in against all, uh, Air Force with eight down and just done a phenomenal job. And the one thing that's really kind of changed with Navy is the, the ability to pass the football. He's thrown for 57% of the time and he's only got one interception. Keenan Reynolds, fantastic. Eight touchdowns, you mentioned. Only the one pick on the season, and he's also run for almost 600. So both sides, they haven't seen a freshman quarterback like this in a long time at Annapolis. Leading you up to the march on here at Lincoln Financial Field. Adam Zucker, Randy Cross, when we come back here in Philly. a wild week at the Naval Academy leading up to the 113th meeting of Army and Navy as we welcome you back inside here at the link Adam Zucker joined by two very special people Captain Robert Clark the Commandant of Midshipmen at the Naval Academy the, the Dean if you will <laughs> and uh, and a special guest this year Midshipman First Class Katie Whitcomb who uh, instead of marching on with her friends and her fellow midshipmen is joining us today and after she graduates this spring she will be heading to Oxford as one of 32 Americans selected as Rhodes Scholars congratulations on uh, all of your success already thank you sir yeah you even served as a sideline reporter for us uh, <laughs> earlier this year but but you're after uh, more important things uh, in the future, and we look forward to talking about that with you. And, and Commandant, uh, a wild week at Navy. You have a, a little hole in the trophy case that you're hoping to fill by the end of the day, huh? Oh, you're absolutely right, Adam. Uh, a hole in the trophy case, a hole in the heart, a whole Navy spirit that uh, in a few hours uh, we're hoping will be uh, filled and uh, stay there for quite some time. This is a, a special day for Army versus Navy here. Uh, what does it mean to you? Uh, I know you're gonna have a, your own son. I know these are all your kids, but even your own son is gonna be out there behind us. It is, and, and you hit on it. Uh, my, my oldest son, Andy, is uh, the 18th company commander. He graduates this year. Uh, but just like Andy, I consider Katie a daughter and the entire uh, midshipmen and the brigade as sons and daughters. And I'm so proud of the class of 13 and the true privilege that they're gonna get to experience in a few short months when they join our sailors and Marines, those folks who are deployed right now uh, out in the Navy and Marine Corps. And Katie, you will be going off to Oxford. Your parents, other than Bob here, uh, <laughs> your, your parents are back in the Philippines now. Tell us how you ended up at the Naval Academy. Oh, well, it's actually been a really interesting story. I had, I actually enlisted first and my recruiter was the one who told me about the Naval Academy. And it's because of him and also the encouragement of the Naval Academy missions that I ended up going and it's been a really great ride ever since. You majored in Chinese. Yes, sir. Uh, you are off to Oxford, as I said. What, what is your dream? What is your plan? What do you want to do with uh, all the knowledge that you've been able to attain? Well, I'm really hoping to be an advocate for human trafficking victims. The research that I'm going to be pursuing at Oxford is going to be looking at terrorism and the nexus between that and human trafficking. And I hope to be able to contribute in ways that will help the Navy and the Marine Corps reach out to 
and fix these problems. Wow, and how were you inspired to, to pursue this? Well, I had the opportunity to uh, go to the Philippines through a really generous scholarship from the Naval Academy to let me volunteer abroad there, and I worked with exploited girls, and it was really an eye-opening experience. It's amazing, and Bob, you have 4,000 individual stories just like this who are all going to be in the stadium today. Yeah, absolutely true, and, and there's a lot of discussion uh, in the media uh, just around town in terms of our national soul and our future. And I tell people when I ever get the chance, if you've got any question about our national soul, if you've got a question about our future, spend some time with these young men and women. Our future is in great hands. Our soul couldn't be brighter. And we're so proud of uh, individuals like Katie and the rest of her class, as are we of the Corps cadets uh, and all our service members uh, worldwide. It really does renew your faith in, in, in the human race, in our country, when you come to this event, especially coming every year and meeting great people like you guys, uh, what, what's it going to be like for uh, for some of the first timers who are going to be marching on here today, having done it before? Oh, it's going to be great. It's a really exciting experience, and the really sweet decor is all there. And it's because it's not just the football game. It's um, yes, we're really excited to go and play and beat Army this year, but uh, it's. It's really great to just be out there as one team. And it is also great to watch and take this all in as we now listen to Midshipman Joshua Ramey, the PA announcer for the Navy March On. In 30 companies, each company is designated by a Navy blue and gold guide on flag. These midshipmen represent every single state in the Union, its territories, and 36 foreign countries. The brigade is commanded by Midshipman Captain Jonathan Poole of Yarmouth, Maine. The 1st Regiment is commanded by Midshipman Commander Logan Baker of Peoria, Arizona. 1st Battalion is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Commander Jocelyn Knutson of Missoula, Montana. First Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Justin Mueller of Missoula, Montana. The Second Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Michael Short of Sicklerville, New Jersey. The Third Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Sean Philbin of Warren, Ohio. The 4th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Darren Negley of Greencastle, Pennsylvania. The 5th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Emily Mellon of Sherwood Forest, Maryland. The 2nd Battalion is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Commander Shannon McCarthy of Washington Township, New Jersey. The 6th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Christopher Barr of Florence, South Carolina. The 7th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant McLean Panter of Memphis, Tennessee. Commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Alex Lazat of Grafton, Massachusetts. Roger, march. Roger, march. The Ninth Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Hunter Harrison of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The 10th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Kristen Gerald of Marietta, Georgia. Third Battalion is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Commander Caroline Lopez of San Antonio, Texas. The 11th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Travis Proby of Temple, Texas. The 
12 company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Philip Williams of Silver Spring, Maryland. The 13th company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Michael Blockberger of Alexandria, Virginia. The 14th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Chloe Stahl of Chino Hills, California. The 15th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Matthew Leverage of Tyrone, Georgia. Second Regiment is commanded by Midshipman Commander Alex Donaldson of Tucson, Arizona. Fourth Battalion is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Commander Brian Gurth of Annapolis, Maryland. Sixteenth Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Phoebe Kotlikoff of Ithaca, New York. The Seventeenth Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Scott Swobolski of Jackson, New Jersey. is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Andy Clark of Stafford, Virginia. The 19th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Christopher Davies of Doylestown, Pennsylvania. The 20th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Dean Black of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Fifth Battalion is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Commander Danica Connick of Mechanicsville, Maryland. The 21st Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Riley Harsh of Malvern, Pennsylvania. The 22nd Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Eric Wooten of Woodbridge, Sam, Virginia. Tim, if you come around a little bit. The 23rd Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Ryan Wilkins of Palmdale, California. 24th Company, the Color Company, is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Chris Gallardo of San Diego, California. The midshipmen of the Color Company have distinguished themselves as the most proficient in the brigade in areas of academics, military professionalism, and naval skill. The 25th Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant David Corbett of Willis, Texas. The 6th Battalion is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Commander Angelo Brichetti of North Kingstown, Rhode Island. The 26th Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Peter Sievertson of El Paso, Texas. The 27th Company is commanded by Midship Lieutenant Christina Carson of Winona, New Jersey. The 28th Company 
Open is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Maxwell Johnson of Glen Ellen, Illinois. The 29th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Stephen Scott of Canyon Lake, Texas. And the 30th Company is commanded by Midshipman Lieutenant Eric Kim of Chicago, Illinois.
more than 4,000 men and women of the brigade getting set to slowly march off here in Philadelphia. Commandant Clark with me, midshipman first class Katie Whitcomb as well. It is something to behold. I, I know you would have loved to be with uh, your, your fellow uh, company members of the, of the 21st Company. Uh, what was it like to watch from up here? Oh, it was really exciting to see us all marching out on the field, sir. It's so much different than actually being on the field. It really is something to watch. And uh, what, what were some of the, we, we saw the, the way they were leading, leading some of the cheers there with the, with the flags. Right, Adam, is, we do a cheer for both sides of the stadium. Because again, one team, one fight, one family. We recognize and respect Army. We recognize and respect Navy. And so we, we acknowledge both sides. Tell me what it was like on campus this week. I mean, there's always, I'm sure, a buzz in the air at the Naval Academy, always a heightened sense of awareness. What was it like, Army Navy Week, especially for your, your as a senior, uh, getting ready for this game? Well, sir, Army Navy Week is usually the craziest of the year. We have finals that are happening next week, but uh, most of the underclass and the, and the underclass show their cheer by doing a lot of pranks, but also goodwill uh, joking around with the West Point cadets on campus. Yeah, we did see a, a, a few minutes ago that there was a bonfire and there was a, uh, a mule involved. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Were you there? Yes, sir. Um, we have these great pep rallies where we just show our um, intense care for the rivalry between the two schools. And Bob, uh, your, your son is out there. You have two sons here, two right? Two sons, uh, first class and then a, a sophomore youngster. One in 18, one in second company. And here they are marching off, uh, one for the last time, and uh, hoping to be coming back to Annapolis later today with that Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Uh, you were saying to us before how there is a, uh, a place reserved for it, and uh, it's a, quite a, a gaping hole at this point. Absolutely, absolutely, and hopefully it'll be filled very soon. What was this? Uh, what was this week like on campus for you? I mean, you, 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 you are in charge of over 4,000 men and women. Well, I think Katie summarized it uh, fairly well. I'll just say this: that when you get to the fleet as a as an officer in the Navy Marine Corps, one of the key things you do is bring order to chaos. And let's just say the leadership in the brigade got to practice that a little bit this week. And, and how did all of your experience? all over the world, whether it was Haiti or, or under the Arctic ice pack, as you told me, uh, he has a great picture of, of the submarine surfacing at the North Pole. How did all that prepare you to run a college campus? Well, I'll be honest with you, just like uh, my military career, it was the sailors. It was the uh, young men and women that I had the privilege to uh, lead and more importantly learn from that not only prepared me to be a commandant, but quite frankly, prepared me to be a better man, uh, officer, and warrior. You graduated in 1984? 1984, yes sir. How would you say the curriculum has changed since then? I would say that it's like anything else with time, it's improved. We've got fantastic instructors, but to also the young men and women that are coming to our service academy are truly top notch, our national treasures. And you are also an athlete yourself. Uh, come the springtime, uh, before you head off to Oxford to be a Rhodes Scholar, uh, you, you, tell us about your track experience. Oh, Navy women's track is just incredible. Our coach, Coach Carla, has been at the academy for more than 20 seasons, and we've had a very good winning record against um, Army in both indoor and outdoor season. It's been great. How, how does the rivalry that we see in football, Katie, translate to the track and field uh, circuit? Oh, it gets really intense, sir. It's a little bit on a diminished scale, but uh, every one of our company mates always support us in any Army-Navy rivalry and in actually every sport on the yard. Uh, it's a big deal where we make signs and it's been really great. 400 meter hurdles? Yes, sir. Has to be, uh, has to be you gotta clear them all. You, you gotta be perfect, Katie. <laughs> it's, it's actually really great. It's, it's, I really enjoy the challenge that it's given me and I love the opportunity to run. And what an opportunity this has all ended up being for you to, to come to the Naval Academy your original plan was just to enlist in the military, and then you ended up uh, with a very uh, observant recruiter. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it, it's been really great. I mean, it started with um, EM3 Brigade. I believe he's EM1 now, and it went all the way to Lieutenant Long and then Mission System, and then all of my teachers at the academy have been fabulous. I didn't have the strongest uh, work, uh, I didn't have the strongest background with science and technology, but all of my teachers have spent so many hours outside the classroom helping me get to where I'm at today. It's been incredible. And now majoring in Chinese, getting <laughs> set to go to Oxford. Uh, 
Captain Clark, what does it take to be one of the over 4,000 men and women of the Naval Academy Brigade? It takes passion, it takes motivation, clearly it takes a good uh, resume and, and uh, academic, physical and moral, but, but it's passion. And we talk about vitamin M, which is motivation. If you come in with enthusiasm, if you come in with passion, and if you want to succeed and do something that's above yourself, we call it service above self, the Naval Academy is the place for you because you will succeed. And of course, you were uh, you were on that field a few <laughs> times. It was the veteran. It was Veteran Stadium, of course, uh, when you were in school. What was it like for you to be part of this and, and and have all these fans come in three hours before kickoff? It was unbelievable. Army Navy Week is an event. It is absolutely a, a spiritual event for the fans, for the teams, for the brigade, for my bosses, <laughs> and it's something you remember for the rest of your life. In fact, on my left wrist, I wear a West Point cufflink that after uh, my plebe year when uh, Navy beat Army, uh, I received from a friend of mine at West Point, and I still wear it to this day. But on my right arm is Navy, and always will be. And that's the thing about this rivalry, as we see uh, Billy the Goat down there, both of them. <laughs> uh, the, you hear throughout the college football season, while well, these guys hate each other. Alabama, Auburn, Ohio State, Michigan, you know, take your pick. But you had some beautiful words last year when we did this show for the first time about how this is truly a rivalry of respect. That's absolutely correct, Adam. The bottom line is uh, leaders and heroes will not be defined today on that field. They will merely just be reflected, or excuse me, they will be, uh, now I'm getting tongue-tied, but what I was gonna say is heroes and leaders will not be defined out there today on that field. They will just be recognized. What truly defines our heroes and leaders is how you prepare how you motivate, how you inspire others. And it's reflective both in the Brigade of Midshipmen and Corps Cadets. Because right now, as we're taking the field in this furnace that we call football, the fires of competition and the embers of respect are burning. And when those embers go out and the fires are extinguished at the end of this game and the sun sets on this field, because rest assured, we will knock heads, we will compete for two and a half hours. But when those embers are extinguished, we will forge a blade of freedom that is made up of the navy blue and gold, the army gray, and the air force blue. And that blade of freedom that will be carried in the sheath of humility and peace is what we will carry throughout the world with our sailors, marines, airmen, and soldiers. So we truly are competitors on the field, in the classroom, but at the end of the day, we are brothers and sisters in arms, one team, one fight, one family. And the true winners are the U.S. people, citizens, and our country for these young men and women who do so much for us and our sailors and Marines deployed worldwide. I think you just doubled in Roman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Captain Clark, thank you so very much uh, for those words, and uh, I think it also says something about the young men and women who choose to enlist or choose to go to one of these military academies when we are at war, as you did four years ago. Uh, Katie Whitcomb, good luck in the future, good luck at Oxford. Captain Clark, thank you so very much. Always a pleasure. Thanks and, uh, for having us. Enjoy the game, and uh, when we come back, we will be getting set for the Army March on. Randy Cross will rejoin me, and the Army Chief of Staff, General Ray Ordierno, will as well. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Inside College Football Army Navy March on, presented by USAA. It is time for the Army Corps of Cadets to march onto the field here in Philadelphia. We will listen to two PA announcers, Cadet Lieutenant Nicholas Rapking and Cadet Sergeant Cord Roberts, here on CBS Sports Network. Four regiments of the United States Corps of Cadets onto the field is the Brigade Commander, Cadet First Captain Brandon Whittington from El Paso, Texas. His staff consists of the Deputy Brigade Commander, Cadet Captain Ross Boston from Chipley, Florida, the Brigade Executive Officer, Cadet Captain Rachel Miller from Norfolk, Massachusetts, the Brigade Adjutant, Cadet Captain Ralph Meekins from Shelby, North Carolina. 
the Brigade of Public Affairs Officer, Cadet Captain Matthew Gadotti from Columbus, Ohio. The Brigade Logistics Officer, Cadet Captain Tyler Woodhouse from Cincinnati, Ohio. The Brigade Information Systems Officer, Cadet Captain Tyler Federwich from Waxahachie, Texas. And Brigade Command Sergeant Major, Cadet Command Sergeant Major Bill Owens III, Arlington, West Virginia. Since the days of the American Revolution, flag bearers have been an important element in ceremonies. Leading today's formation and bearing the national colors, the United States Corps of Cadets Color Guard, led by Cadet Color Sergeant John Slattery from Nashville, Tennessee. The 1st Regiment is commanded by Cadet Captain Eileen Deegan from Scottsdale, Arizona. The Regimental Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Sean Sororian from Savannah, Georgia. The 1st Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Kylie Hunkler from St. Louis, Missouri. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Stuart T. Horton from Rochester Hills, Michigan. Company A is commanded by Cadet Captain Adam Lowe from Columbia, Maryland. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Robert Downey from Williamsburg, Virginia. Company B is commanded by Cadet Captain Micah Wolf from Tipton, Indiana. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Timothy Bauer from Greenville, Ohio. Company C is commanded by Cadet Captain William Alfonso from Kingston, New Hampshire. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Derek Schwartz from Leavenworth, Kansas. The 2nd Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Aaron Jacobson from Moundsview, Minnesota. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Jonathan Hunter from Hampton, Virginia. Company D is commanded by Cadet Captain Michael Manukian from North Andover, Massachusetts. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Devin T. Adams from Alabaster, Alabama. Company E is commanded by Cadet Captain Harrison Morgan from Glastonbury, Connecticut. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Cody Peterson from Ira, Vermont. Company F is commanded by Cadet Captain Robert Francis Delaney from Bray's Lake, Illinois. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant David Hakula from Vassalboro, Maine. The 3rd Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Michael Bouchard from Laconia, New Hampshire. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Christopher Posadas from Lindenhurst, New York. Company G is commanded by Cadet Captain Christine Tabo from Upperville, Virginia. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Kyle Olsen from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Company H is commanded by Cadet Captain A.J. Tuminello from Yorktown, Virginia. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Nels Espel from Missoula, Montana. Company I is commanded by Cadet Captain Sarah Sabarbro, Lakewood, Colorado. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Debraj Mukherjee from Cleveland, Ohio. The 2nd Regiment is commanded by Cadet Captain Brenna Heisman from Clifton, New Jersey. The Regimental Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Blake Sufferly from Marietta, Georgia. The 1st Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Nick Thurston from Lake Mills, Wisconsin. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Antonia Allen from El Paso, Texas. Company A is commanded by Cadet Captain Michael Zweifel from Seward, Alaska. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Catherine Donahoe from El Paso, Texas. Company B is commanded by Cadet Captain Grant Fab from Bath, North Carolina. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Matthew Fitzpatrick from Chicago, Illinois. Company C is commanded by Cadet Captain Christopher Moropoulos from Palmer, Alaska. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Angela Vargas from Riverside, California. The 2nd Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Elliot Violetto, Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Michael Lebeck from Chicago, Illinois. 
Company D, commanded by Net Captain Trevor Cooler from Roswell, New Mexico. The First Sergeant, Cadet First Sergeant Bradford Witt from Flint, Michigan. Company E is commanded by Cadet Captain Ryan Montgomery from Anchorage, Alaska. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant John Barr from Oxford, Pennsylvania. Company F is commanded by Cadet Captain Nick Kerr from Centerville, Ohio. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Ruby On from Greenwich, Connecticut. The 3rd Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Vincent Franchino from Stony Point, New York. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Isaac Gutierrez from Santa Rosa, California. Company G is commanded by Cadet Captain Wayne Pop from Boulder, Colorado. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Sebastian Smoke from Dangerfield, Texas. Company H is commanded by Cadet Captain Dustin Rubel from Kent, Washington. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Max Sauerwein from Phoenix, Arizona. Company I is commanded by Cadet Captain Alexander Kim from Irvine, California. The 1st Sergeant is Cadet 1st Sergeant Eric Uribe from Monument, Colorado. Regiment is commanded by Cadet Captain Thomas Ott from Coopersburg, Pennsylvania. Regimental Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Sarah Ryder from El Paso, Texas. First Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Brian Moore from Irvine, California. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Mitchell McKnight from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Cadet Captain William Lane from Greensboro, North Carolina. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Justin Suh from Glendale, California. Company B is commanded by Cadet Captain Jessica Catney from Brighton, Michigan. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Phil Nochin from Johns Creek, Georgia. C is commanded by Cadet Captain Benjamin Potter from Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Brian Girardi from New Canaan, Connecticut. The Second Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Bill Holder from Palo Alto, California. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Barbara Hathaway from Wyndham, Kansas. Company D is commanded by Cadet Captain Matt Rizanka from Yorktown Heights, New York. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Richard McVee from Monticello, Georgia. Company E is commanded by Cadet Captain Mark Owens from Pearl River, New York. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Edward Timmons from Alpine, Arizona. Company F is commanded by Cadet Captain Emily McCarthy from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Max Miner from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Third Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Andrew Gregg from Seattle, Washington. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Brian Rupert from Trout Run, Pennsylvania. Company G is commanded by Cadet Captain Heather Deppy from San Antonio, Texas. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Dustin Arnold from Kutztown, Pennsylvania. Company H is commanded by Cadet Captain Jonathan Lee from Shreveport, Louisiana. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Gary Oakland from Bothell, Washington. Company 
eyes commanded by Cadet Captain Elizabeth Kim from Napierville, Illinois. The first sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Christian Grotto from Sugarland, Texas. Fourth Regiment is commanded by Cadet Captain Justin Anka from Maui, Hawaii. The Regimental Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Orlando Sanza from Union, New Jersey. The First Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Peter Schlaughter from Centerville, Virginia. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Christian Beckler from Burbank, California. by Cadet Captain Lee Eschger from Cape Vincent, New York. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant James McLaughlin from Boston, Massachusetts. Company B is commanded by Cadet Captain Danielle Myers from Yorba Linda, California. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Joseph Valenzuela from Goodyear, Arizona. Company C is commanded by Cadet Captain Dan Godlasky from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Joey Durso from Honolulu, Hawaii. The Second Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain David Cavell from Walbatosa, Wisconsin. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Jonathan Mecker from Indianapolis, Indiana. is commanded by Cadet Captain Mike Garman from Reno, Nevada. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Stephen Horning from Spokane, Washington. Company E is commanded by Cadet Captain Steve Hansen from Ashburn, Virginia. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Amanda Derrico from Colorado Springs, Colorado. F is commanded by Cadet Captain Samuel Terhar from Litchfield, Connecticut. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Michael Joyner from Parker Heights, Texas. The Third Battalion is commanded by Cadet Captain Brendan Buckley from Massapequa, New York. The Battalion Command Sergeant Major is Cadet Command Sergeant Major Justin Haggerty from Belleville, Michigan. G is commanded by Cadet Captain Jason Panko from San Juan Capistrano, California. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Brian Reasonover from Nashville, Tennessee. The H is commanded by Cadet Captain Harrison Green from Fair Oaks Ranch, Texas. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Stephen Murphy from Wilmington, Delaware. Company I is commanded by Cadet Captain Nicholas Kasner from Barnesville, Georgia. The First Sergeant is Cadet First Sergeant Jonathan Kasher from Isla Morada, Florida. Gentlemen, the United States Corps of Cadets.
Ladies and gentlemen, standing before you are the cadets of the United States Military Academy and members of the United States Army Cadet Command. Every one of them has chosen to answer the call to duty. With their salute, they recognize and honor your show of support. These cadets today will lead America's sons and daughters tomorrow in the defense of our great nation. And now, Army fans, join the Corps as they cheer the Army team towards victory with the Rocket! Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the United States Corps of Cadets. The marches that are being played as the cadets exit the stadium are the official Army song. The Army goes rolling along. Washington Post, on to victory. Gridiron Grenadiers, Americans we, and on brave old Army team. The United States Military Academy Corps of Cadets have marched onto the field in Philadelphia. Army, the home team today. So Army marching on second. They're hoping to perform their alma mater second, meaning that they have won over their rival for the first time in 11 years and will be bringing the Commander in Chief's trophy back to West Point for the first time since 1996. We have to stay objective, of course, but someone who doesn't joins us now Cadet Lieutenant Tommy Putnam Busterud from Company F4 Frogs and a, Go Frogs. Yeah, a, a California native just like our Randy Cross enjoying a uh, cold misty Philadelphia morning as well but dressed appropriately and uh, Tommy thanks for being with us. Not the first time you've held that microphone this year. I know you were a, uh, a sideline reporter for us as well. Uh, it's been a fun year for you, huh? Oh yeah, it's been a great, it's been a great year. I, um, I was able to be a sideline reporter for uh, us against Boston College where we had a really great win in the fourth quarter. Uh, it was a great game to commentate on. It was, it was a great privilege to have. What's it like for you to uh, not be down there in the mix and uh, watching it from above? Oh, it's it's amazing. It's it's a privilege to be up here. I mean, it's uh, it's always a great game, uh, Army Navy. It's like it's like us uh, going to the Super Bowl every year. So it's awesome. What what was the academy like? What what were the what were the what was the entire core like this week with Army Navy Week? Is, is there just something you have to? be there to experience it oh yeah it's amazing um we're all so into it we're there's a lot of preparation uh, as you can see the people parading down the field uh, we spent about a good three hours a night for two nights preparing for it up in our stadium and um, just getting ready for it and the, the buzz on the campus is amazing it's just it's a great time what is that like because it obviously is the biggest game of the year it's your your bitter rival uh one that you still respect though we, we saw a navy pep rally where there was a bonfire and a a, a mule was yep. was pretty Very lit up mule. yeah well in our in our case uh we burn a boat so <laughs> we got a, i think about a 30-foot boat this year and um, put it out on our main plane 
and our firefighters came out and uh, set it ablaze. So it was a pretty good pep rally. You know, all, all the seniors, you all found out, all the firsties found out what their branch was going to be. Mm -hmm. You got infantry. What does that mean for you once you leave the academy after graduation? Uh, well, I, so I branched infantry. Uh, we all find out our branches about uh, a week and a half ago. And for all of us, it's basically on graduation, we become second lieutenants and we commission in the, in the United States Army. And after that, there's about uh, 60 days of, of leave for us. And then from there, it's going into your individual training for uh, each branch. So for me, um, I'll be training uh, down at Fort Benning, Georgia uh, to become an infantry officer. What was it that made you originally come to the United States Military Academy? Um, well, my family's had a, a lot of history in the military. Um, my father's currently in the U.S. Army Reserves, um, and there's just been a there's been a big tradition in my family of um, service to the nation, and I really wanted to serve my country and do well. And uh, what better place than West Point? A uh, family history that, uh, because of your middle name Putnam, goes all the way back to the French and Indian War, the American Revolution as well. Uh, Tommy Buster Rude joining us here from the company F4 Frogs. Thank you for joining us here, sir. Thanks a lot. And uh, good luck to you in the future. All right, thank you very much. All right, and we will be right back with the Army Chief of Staff, General Ray Ordierno, joins us live when we come back. I'm General Ray Odierno, Chief of Staff for the United States Army, here with the West Point Class of 2013. Next year at this time, these seniors will be leading soldiers across the globe, defending America's freedom. But right now, we have one mission, and what is it? Navy! What is it? Navy! One more time. What a presence General Ray Ordierno is, the Army Chief of Staff, who is hoping to say mission accomplished by the end of the night tonight. And uh, General Ordierno joins us now. It is great to have you here, sir. Uh, thank you for making time. To, well, it's uh, great to be here. To be with us. Uh, you, you were in this you were in this march on uh, not too long ago, right? Yeah, I got to do it a couple times. I was just telling uh, Randy, you know, I was recruited to play football, and I played for two years. and got pretty significantly injured, so I had to stop the football. But I owe everything I, I've had today to football because I probably wouldn't have went to West Point if it wasn't for football. How, and, how important are the, the, the team values, and how closely are they woven into what the Army does Very too? carefully. And one of the things that Rich Ellison has done tremendously is really he recruits kids as the Army ethic, leadership ethic, mm -hmm. and that they understand that as they come in. And then he, football and what we do in the Army is such a close association. You know, mental, physical toughness, resiliency, able to overcome, hard work, uh, leadership, you know, all of those things that apply in football apply directly to what we want our lieutenants to do when they come into the Army. So for me, it's it's a complete, uh, really close relationship. Army guys get a lot done before most people wake up. Talk about the time commitment that's involved, not only for any cadet at West Point, but especially members of the football team. Well, what I've always said is what's different being a football player or any athlete at West Point is that you do everything else that everyone else does, and then you participate in intercollegiate athletics. And that's very different than the way it is in other institutions. You have to do all the activities that all the other cadets do. You have to take all the courses all the other cadets do. You have to do all the military training that all the other cadets do. And then you play football or baseball or basketball. And uh, so to me, that's what makes these athletes special to go to West Point. And you had a chance at least a couple times this year to watch this Army football team. Some uh, pretty emotional moments that you were there on the sidelines. Yeah, I'm 2-0, I'm and oh, so I'm hoping that hey. carries on. Uh, I was there at the Boston College game and uh, at the Air Force game. And, uh, you know, we've developed a pretty close relationship with this team. And they're, they're great young men. And, uh, and I like being around them when I can. Unfortunately, I don't always have that opportunity. But I, I'm looking forward to today. I think it's going to be a great game. And I think they're going to play hard. And I think it's going to be a good outcome for Army today. Last year, after this game, you ended up having to wear a Navy jersey, I number 75, I believe. Uh, I who, who has to put on an Army jersey if uh, Army wins the, today? The, the Chief of Naval Operations, John Greener, that individual right there, <laughs> is going to wear the Army jersey today. But you know, it's a great thing. I, you know, as much as I hated putting that jersey on, <laughs> I just want to make that very clear. 
you know, those are great young men on the Navy side, too, so you don't mind doing it. And as a rivalry goes, and this is something we've talked about a lot today, there's other football rivalries where the word hate comes up, but yeah. with this rivalry, it is one of great mutual respect. And at the end of this game, especially for the Army seniors who won't be in a bowl game, they, they, they're arm in arm with each other, even yeah. arm in arm with the guys from the yeah. Navy side. A lot no, of respect. That's right, and they will, they will run into each other down the road, I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've run into several people in the Navy and the Air Force who we play football against or other sports against who you meet later on down the line, and uh, it, it means something. And, you know, this is a band of brothers, and we always talk about that. And, you know, for us, it's a band of brothers within the Army, but it's also a band of brothers in the Joint Force, which includes the Marine Corps, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. And, you know, we, we have a mutual respect for each other, but on this day, it's all about beating Navy for us. And for them, it's about beating Army. But that's what builds this relation. This is, this is something that's gone on 113 years, and it was as you know, it was, it was as uh, passionate 113 years ago as it is today. That's what makes it a great game. And this, Amer this is America's game today. Gets its own weekend now. Yeah, which is great. And actually, I want to, you know, while I'm here, I want to thank CBS and CBS Sports for all that you've done for Academy football. Uh, and the fact that you, you have every home game on TV. And I DVR most of them. I don't get a chance to know. I'll DVR them. And I look at, I look at them. And uh, I appreciate the fact that you covered Academy football. It's made a huge difference, and I really, truly appreciate that. And I appreciate CBS being here to do the game today. Well, we will continue to do so, and you keep up the good work as well. Uh, I'd love you to, to, to say something to the, the young men at home who might be thinking about joining the military, and, and what's it say about the cadets who are on the field behind us, the ones who will also put on the helmets today, the ones who signed up four years ago, five years ago, when our nation was yeah. even more at war. Well, I always talk about this is about joining something that's bigger than yourself. If you want to be a part of something that's special, that has special culture, leadership, capabilities, that will, that will draw the best out of you as an individual. I guarantee you, if you want to join the service, it will make you a better person. It will make you better physically, better mentally, and it, it makes you part of something, something that's important, part of that means something to this country, providing the security to our country. And we want great young men and women who want to do that. And there's a lot of them that are out here today. And there's a lot of them that are out in Afghanistan and around the world today protecting our country. And so if you want to do something that's great, and you want to do something that's going to make you a better person, join the Army. And we'd love to have you. What is this day like for you, by the way? I, this is a very busy. special yeah, day. It's busy. You must be scheduled busy. down to the minute. Uh, you know, it is. It's scheduled down to the minute. Uh, <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, it's special. Uh, you know, I had last year was the first one I had been to in quite a long time because I'd been deployed for five straight years in Iraq, and so I wasn't able to attend the game. So it was special to come back. And you forget the pageantry, the excitement uh, that surrounds it. But it, it, it's just a special day, and it's a day you'll never forget. These football players will never forget this day. It doesn't matter if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, you will never forget the day of the Army Navy Day. Hey. For all these cadets, both sides, all the players on the field, the, the ones that are the seniors, what's coming next for them? You've been through that. Yeah. You've come, you've yeah, marched sure. on this field, graduated in May, and then what comes after that? For well, them? actually, last week, I think the third this week, or last week, they got their branches. So the 22 seniors, 22 seniors on the Army football team, they they all picked their branches, and that's the first step. 21 out of the 22, I'm told, went combat arms. Uh, which tells me how dedicated they are to ensuring that they can lead in the future. And I'm very proud of that. So the next step will be they'll figure out where they're going. They get a chance to do that. And then uh, next summer, they'll go and begin their training to become officers in the United States Army. And so this is kind of the culmination of them for their athletic career. And after today, they will start to look forward about being lieutenants in the United States Army. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to getting them out there because a lot of great leaders out there. Thank you. Just like thank you, you sir. Much. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, enjoy the game and uh, hoping for a different result, of course, than the last 10 years. Uh, I, I think this is the year. I really do. And I think we're going to play. We're gonna, I guarantee you one thing. You're going to see them play hard. You're going to see them hit the whole game. And it's going to be a great close game, and I think Army's going to prevail in the end. All right, we're looking forward to seeing those uh, Battle of the Bulge like tribute it. uniforms as well from 1944 when uh, the Black Knights take the field. Army, the cadets now, the Corps, marching off.
here in Philadelphia. We will continue here on CBS Sports Network, our inside college football Army Navy March on, presented by USAA. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. The Corps of Cadets has cleared the field, and now the midshipmen of Navy who will play in today's Army-Navy game are on there going through warm-ups. It is the first time since 2005 that the Commander-in-Chief trophy is on the line, and the fifth time ever as a result of both Navy and Army winning their games against Air Force. Navy meeting Air Force in the first leg in the race for the coveted Commander-in-Chief's trophy. Reynolds, the pitch to Copeland, lunges and he's in. And the midshipmen have tied it here in Colorado Springs. And it is no good. And for the second straight year, Navy and Air Force are going to overtime. Reynolds, into the end zone, no signal yet, and now they say touchdown. And now the pressure squarely on Air Force. Gonna throw it, bat it down, and Navy moves one step closer to reclaiming the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. CBS at 3 o'clock. We are going to be with you until 2.30 Eastern Time, getting you ready for this unique, one-of-a-kind storied rivalry. And, of course, all of it prefaced, Randy, by what we just saw with the Army and Navy march on. And, of course, great to have General Lordierno here with us, too. Well, you know, it, that's why that part is why this Army-Navy game should be on everybody's bucket list from, from a sports standpoint. And not just because the game starts at 3.05. That march on starting around noon, 12.30, that's every bit as good as the game for what these kids are committed to. And if you're someone who benefits from saying to people, thank you, you will benefit a whole lot coming here today because just about everywhere you turn, there's someone that you should be thanking. And then cheering on as they take the field against each other, Army versus Navy today on CBS at 3 o'clock Eastern time. And, of course, we will be with you, as I said, until 2.30 Eastern time with our tailgate show. It is now time, though, to check in with Brent Stover, who is outside with a special guest. Thanks. I'm with Command Master Chief Vaughn Banks, currently working on her fourth degree at the University of Phoenix. And Vaughn, how does the University of Phoenix help the military community fulfill their higher education goals? The University of Phoenix is awesome in helping the military. First and foremost, we're very busy and we're doing more with less. And for me, I travel so much, it's the only opportunity, the online part. You know, I finished my associates, I did my undergrad and my master's, and right now I'm working on my doctorate degree with the University of Phoenix. I love it and I wouldn't trade it for anything. For you, almost 30 years in the military, what advice would you give the athletes and the students out here today going forward? Well, I just tell them to stay focused, stay resilient, play their best game on and off the field. And no matter what they do, give it their best. Are you feeling good about Navy here today or not? Yes, I'm feeling really good about Navy, but I just feel good about the whole day. I love all of them. I've never seen a cadet or, or a midshipman that I couldn't love. From the University of Phoenix, we appreciate your time. Vaughn Banks. <laughs> Thank you so very much. It's the 113th Army-Navy game leading you up to it, and we will wrap up this show when we return. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to run the ball, and we're going to run through the group and through Stribling, and in the wake of our run, there will be echoes of the legacies from the past, the rich tradition that's about the United States Naval Academy. Go!
running the football all the way from Annapolis and into the stadium. That is the game ball for Army Navy here in Philly. The General Douglas MacArthur once said, on the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds that on other days and other fields will bear the fruits of victory. BJ, I would like something just as insightful and profound as that when we react to what we saw the march on from Well, I got all my rowdy friends with me right here, baby. When you talk about that march on, the precision in which they do that procession, there's no way the three of us could do that in unison. We'd be tripping all over each other. That was phenomenal. And Coach, for you to witness the first time ever, you had to be had to have enjoyed that. Well, as I said earlier, it is um, just the energy. And, and you talked about the precision. Everybody was on exactly the same page. And for that many people, obviously you can tell they've been practicing. But it was <laughs> really impressive. This whole atmosphere is so exciting. And it's, and it's just it's a spectacle. It's something that everybody needs to have on their bucket list. Step away from Army Navy momentarily. The Heisman Trophy will be awarded tonight. BJ, kind of handicap this thing for us with the three finalists. Well, unfortunately for your boy, Colin Klein, I think he's out of this still. I don't think he can overcome what happened there in Waco. But you talk about Johnny football. I don't care if he's a freshman. Anyone who's not voting for him because of his classification, they're crazy and shouldn't get a vote anymore. Mm -hmm. But Colin Klein, we said it. He epitomizes football player. Won't wow you with his arm. Won't wow you with his run ability, but he gets it done. And of course, I love linebackers. I wish he would win it. I don't think he will. Coach, you look at the tackles, not a gaudy number. The seven interceptions is very impressive, but I'd have to have at least 160 tackles. Well, I, I, I agree with you, BJ. And he's won an awful lot of awards already. But you gotta think, you gotta think that Johnny Football is gonna probably be the guy. But once again, he's a guy that. Texas A&M wouldn't be where they are without the type of year that he had. So it's just a, it's going to be exciting, and we're going to find out here in a few hours. Coach, quickly, who is your pick? Is it Johnny Football? Johnny Manziel. How about you, BJ? Johnny Football brings it home the first freshman ever. I hate to say that as a longhorn, <laughs> but it's the truth. That's it for this show. Our next show is Army-Navy Tailgate, brought to you by USAA from here in Philly. Ryan Jones, Ron Zook, Adam Zucker. And Randy Cross will be part of that. Enjoy. I have no idea as to how I'm going to be paying for college. I'm the second oldest of 14 children. I'm currently working five nights a week. I am paying for law school on my own. Let me tell you about my goals, my ambitions. I'm really passionate about it.